So, Friday night, 10 p.m. slot, another Battle for Midway match. It's going to be North America Division 3, the Merkstar Turret Drops versus Cameron's Highlanders. Take a quick look at rosters. On Merkstar, we've got Dry the Blue, Kamichiwa, Xavier, Holy Jackson, Damocles 1, Black Templar. It's really not a player name. That's a unit name shoved into a player, player spot, spot, but sure. Yeah. Black Templars, Raptors. Interesting username. Uh, El Bandito. Informati El et Obliterati. Interestingly, Jarl's list has no info for him. Nightmage, James Bombed. He gets points for the pun. Crimson Helix, Potato Guns, and... Protellus? Seems good. Yeah. Draws list gives them as a group an overall rank of 35-65, 91 percentile. As a squad, they look pretty strong. Yeah, and uh, a lot of those stats, uh, that's going to reflect their quick play numbers. Of course, Merc start playing a lot of uh, a lot of fl uh, faction play. So, Yeah. And the only reason I use them is it's an easy thing to grab. Okay. I wish we actually had comparable comp stats tracked like this, but unfortunately, game isn't quite that big yet. So... I have to stick with what we got. Uh, looking on the Cameron's Highlander sides, we've got Orbit Rain, Sir Epic Poner, White Tiger, Torwin Dog, Grim Drake, Derek Lou, Candyman, Auton, Devorak, and Kulan. Again, another player that Jarl's List doesn't have data for. Uh, smaller squad, according to Jaws' list, lower overall rank, but as pointed out, this is quick play stats. It really doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and you know, uh, I recognize uh, these guys. They're out there in group queue quite a bit. Um, as far as I know, and I could be wrong though, this is, uh, I think this is at least kind of their first dip into competitive play, so interesting to see what they'll bring here. Yeah. And as far as formats to try out competitive play, I think this is an excellent choice for the first foray. Yeah, this is uh, great. I love Battle for Midway. It's really unique. Just tonnage base, a uh, lot of variety in the drop decks. Every deck is different. Every team brings something else. So it's uh, it's kind of one of my favorites. I mean, MRBC, regular MRBC is great, but it's kind of got its format right. Uh, and you see a lot of the same decks from a lot of the same teams. And this one... Uh, it's kind of a wild card of what's, what kind of mechs and what kind of decks you're going to see. Yeah, I think that's what really draws me to it is this is never a format where you can pick one mech and get comfortable for the whole series. You have to change it up between just the drop requirements and the changing maps. There is no one meta that will carry you through the series. That, and I know we saw it last night, too, uh, in the other uh, game that you cast. For instance, sometimes you get that first drop, and a uh, team will bring three of the same mech. You know that that next drop, that they're going to bring something else, uh, and it's hard to game plan for that. So it's hard to really counter it if you, if you go down early on that. Something like a three linebacker deck, uh, the next deck's going to look completely different, and it's kind of figuring out. Just kind of hope that the the deck that you plan for is going to be enough to to counter whatever they bring. Yep. And it has been interesting to see, especially in the higher divs, even the unexpected play styles show up. Who would have thought LRMs would show up in Div One? <laughs> no kidding. So. I had the privilege of eating some of those LRMs, too. Yeah, that's never fun.
Nope. But that's what I like about this. It keeps it interesting. And for those that haven't figured it out yet, I am not solo tonight. The other voice you're hearing is Captain Judas. So if you, want to, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, not much to, uh, to introduce. Uh, I've been, been around for a little while now. Uh, I have some competitive seasons under my belt with MRBC. Uh, I did Battle for Midway last season, uh, as well as in, on a team this year around. I um, also did WC, uh, World Champs, with uh, Smoke Adders 373 this year. Excellent. Just kind of along for the ride. Cool. Uh, I actually got a chance to play with Smoke Adders 505th in World Championship. Fun group of guys, and very happy they gave me a spot. Yeah, it's a great system. I like what the, the Smoke Adders do over there. Uh, there's always options for all, all level of competitive play there. Which is very cool to see. Oh, and i got to report one player is having some issues getting logged in. So it's going to be a little bit of a wait for the first match. Which, speaking of, our first match, as this is week two, should be Mining Collective for the first two drops. So far, it so seems far. like it's been pretty much brawls at Theta. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of that, especially in these, these first two drops. Um, Obviously, it's it's good to it's easy to brawl. You see sometimes a lot of streak decks. I think we saw that last night. We saw that in the first week on on Canyon as well. Uh, it's always interesting to see if those streak decks are going to work out because obviously you can't aim where you need it. Are you going to be able to to focus your fire and drop guys quick enough to to really take advantage of the the streaks or not? Um, you got to watch out for the lights. Obviously, you got piranhas out there. Yep, and the first two drops being tonnage limited I mean you're going to have lights no matter yep. what. Money Collective is kind of an interesting one, though. Um, you can have several different – you can get that brawl, but, uh, you know, even in the, 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 uh, the previous season of Battle for Midway, um, we had some teams even on those first two drops uh, trying to play some range and get up high positions on Money Collective. So. Yeah, I've – practiced more traditional trading on mining for uh, regular MRBC. I keep hoping to see that in Battle for Midway, but with the six player per side limitation, I don't think you really can effectively do map control. Um, you, you can, but yeah, you gotta, you have to have the right situation. Um, sometimes that, uh, just last night on, on Grim Plexus, you saw a strong position from, uh, from 228 taking Hamburger Hill there, that Fox 6 Hill, which is typically a good place to be, but because of Battle for Midway, the format and where the caps are at, it's, it's hard to, to just be strong in that position and maintain, uh, maintain control. So Battle for Midway is kind of interesting with the three cap points, um, a lot of times it does turn into a straight fight, but uh, those those caps can matter too, so you can't just completely ignore them. Yeah, and I think last night's match was the first time I actually saw a match decided by the clock before either capping out or both sides being eliminated. Again, not something I'd normally expect in a match. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the lower match time makes a difference. So you might not even hit that that 750 a lot of times, but um, if you sit there, that that early five minutes can can make a big difference for you to be able to to catch up. Uh, they got to keep one mech alive, so the the hold you to the the three cap rule. Um, of course, if the the one team manages to kill the whole other team, then they can really just catch up within and capture any of the the cap points at that point. Same points a lot there. Again, more things that make this an interesting format. So, still waiting for one player on 
MS's side. So mining collective, right? We got for cap points, we got gamma, theta, and sigma. All kind of uh, the home cap on each side is kind of going to be ignored. At least one of them. Yeah, really comes down to which side of theta do you think the initial contact's going to be? They're going to go delta or echo? Yep. And looking at chat, I'm already getting correctly called an amateur. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I'd hate but... to see what they're calling me. Well, at this point on the stream, apparently, I hadn't introduced you yet. So they don't know who you are. That's perfect. But as noted when I posted this, this is a low-effort pirate production. So you can't expect perfection out of me. Uh, do you have the map strat up? I can put that back up. Yeah. Map strat is up. So uh, you kind of mentioned it. Uh... Probably going to see a lot of action here around Theta, uh, one way or another. Um, and like you said, there's there's kind of this is what I'd say you typically would see a lot: uh, Team One taking the lower of the Echo side, Team Two taking Delta. Um, but uh, chances are it's going to turn into a brawl. But like I kind of mentioned, we've I've seen teams, uh, especially last year, they'll take up high positions here. Uh, of course, there's some strong positions up here as well where they can take away and. Kind of whittle the enemy team down before maybe they do a brawl push or uh I, i'm interested to see what's going to happen because you can you can take some of these high positions and uh and range them out a little bit which is a good strategy to take obviously if you're expecting the other team to bring some uh some streaks so but who knows uh th i mean drops drops one and two in any competitive series it seems like they always kind of snowball fast so it's really about who's going to have the good focus fire um, getting that first kill, that that second kill to to really just win on numbers, win on focus fire, and just just snowball that other team to death, right? Yep. Oh, and looking like we're gonna roll here. MS is locked in. Cameron's heroes have locked in. Just waiting for them to hit go. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Oh, and you someone did that on chat as well. <laughs> you have fans. They're out there. And here come the dropships. So, looking on the Merksar side. Command coming in. Capture and hold the resource. Jenner 2C. Any Haven't seen many of those running around away. lately. A couple linebackers, Piranha, another linebacker, and a Miss Lynx. Yep, there's that, that triple linebacker kind of deck that I talked about before. Uh, it looks like on Cameron Highlanders, we got a Blackjack, a uh, Piranha, Arctic Cheetah. They got one linebacker, or two linebackers over there, and then a hunchback 2CA, so that's the, the energy one. It's actually becoming one of my favorite mechs. Blackjack's kind of an interesting pick. Uh, wonder what they're going to do with that. Uh, you got me curious now. Let's see if I can find him before the real mess starts, as no surprise, we're all piling up on Theta. Cameron's oh, Highlander's got up top first.
Blackjack is an AC-20 and a snub-nosed PPC. Raleigh, I like it. Got some UAVs up, it looks like, up over here uh, above Theta. Uh, this is going to be a hard place for Mercer to try and push into, but it looks like but, they're going to do it anyway. Yep, yeah, that's a hard drive up on top, all three linebackers plus the Jenner. Yeah. Miss Link's looks jumping like in from the side. Battle's kind of everywhere here. Um, it looks like they're trying to focus down uh, one of these uh, linebackers here. Doing a good job of it. Got James down to 60. Deraku down to 64. James is... Deraku All right, drops. Drop in. One, one here. Linebackers Mercer. considered the early threat. Yep, Cameron's, Cameron uh, Highlanders are looking a little bit healthier here, though. Got two really hurt Mer Merkstar mechs. There goes one. Arctic Cheetah down. Uh, it's it's even out here, but Merkstar is still pretty hurt. About to take down that last linebacker. There he goes. Wait, oh. Rana's working him hard. Can't quite seal the deal. There he goes. Two piranhas, or so. Yep, that's two light mechs left for Merkstar and uh, a piranha and a hunchback for Cameron's Highlanders. All they need to really do, they're they're fighting one-on-one -on -one battles. They really should try to double team on one of the guys. Two to one advantage for Cameron's Highlanders now. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be able yep. to to hold them off. Look at the stats. Fairly even damage spreads across the board and between the teams. That match really could have gone either way, depending on who got the kills at the right time. Yeah, like I said, this is uh, these are drops that can snowball pretty quick. So it uh, looks like the Orbit Rain, he's got, uh, he was able to sort, secure three kills for Cameron Highlanders. Prototelis, sorry if I butchered that, he's got three kills over there for, uh, for Merkstar. Um, but uh, as you said, damage numbers are pretty pretty spread out there. All right, get the scores updated. Jump back to the lobby. So this will be kind of a, an interesting drop too. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, you have the, the rule where you can use a chassis three times throughout the whole match, all five drops. Uh, so we won't see any more linebackers from, from Merc Star. Uh, and we're gonna see pretty much a completely different deck for them, uh, from them on the same map, so. Interesting yeah. to see if, if Cameron's Highlanders will just stick with the, the same kind of thing. They have some flexibility to do that, even though they took a, a couple of linebackers. Themselves. Yeah, so lots of good brawl options in that tonnage range. I'm curious if MS is going to try something other than straight up brawl this time. Well, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm no expert on it. Uh, I don't play a whole lot of faction play, but, you know, fast, fast brawl is kind of... Kind of what Merkstar does, right? True. So, uh, and I'd imagine they're probably going to stick with, with something they're comfortable with. Not to say that they can't do a, a ranged deck or that they're incapable of it. Um, but I'm going to expect a, a similar kind of something fast and brawly from them. There was no assassins in those first two decks. Um, pretty, pretty popular to bring here on drops one and two. So I bet you this time around we're probably going to see some assassins. Other mech I'm expecting to see at some point, or at least I like it and prefer to see it in these situations. The uh, SRM2 Javelin seems to be a decent sized punch for a fast brawl, given its weight. I do like that mech too, uh, but doesn't seem to be too much of a popular pick. I think we have seen it a few times, at least in, in week one as well, though. Actually, I think you're right. So 
So just waiting for everyone to figure out where they want to be in the drops. I see the emote spam has started in chat. Beautiful. Looks like we're almost all readied up here. A little bit more shuffling. CH is locked in. MS is locked in. Waiting for the map to load. All right, drop two. All right, so looking at Cameron's Arctic Cheetah, in. Arctic Wolf, Hunchback, Linebacker, Hunchback, and an Irby. So All right, and then, yeah, Merkstar. Uh, they're bringing three Bushwhackers this time. Um, all different variants, but probably going to be brawling it out. Um, probably, again, that fast brawl. Uh, we have an uh, Arctic Wolf as well over there, and uh, a Piranha and a Nova. Nova's kind of an interesting pick. Let's we'll see what they're going to do with that. Yeah. I haven't seen the Nova as much as I would have expected. Nah. Merkstar with the early touch on Theta. That Piranha's not going to want to stick around, Theta though. Theta is controlled by the enemy. Yep, they got, uh, got the Irby up there, it looks like, chasing him away. CH once again taking the top as Merkstar. Eh, kind of a half push onto the top. Bushwhacker is getting focused two on one. Meanwhile, the Irby got stuck in a bad spot. Goes down early. One Merkstar Bushwhacker is hurting. Yeah, these bushwhackers seem to be doing some uh, some early work here, though. Yeah, they've singled out Nardi Cheetah, taking him down. Yep, they're doing a good job fighting battles where they have the, the man advantage on. They're not trying to do the one-on-one -on -one stuff so much. Or kind of get some of... Work. He's about to get dropped, yep. Doing a good... See, they're catching guys separated out where they can all focus on him at the same time. Uh, like we said, these these first two drops, they snowball so quick. Uh, it looks like this one's going to go a uh, pretty clean, decisive win for Merkstar. Yeah. Epic Boner loses leg and gets cleaned out. That's quick all match. she wrote. So, much different damage spread for Cameron's Highlanders this time. Yep, a couple of other guys got caught out kind of quick there, kind of early. They got singled out. They were fighting unfair battles, and uh, uh, they went down pretty quick.
No, we did pretty solid though. A couple kills. Couple kills, decent damage. Yeah, very even spread for Markstar, and that was a very controlled brawl from their standpoint. That seemed like uh, that's that's what they're very comfortable with, right? Yeah. That, that quick brawling as a team. So now we up the tonnage and we move on to Grimplexus. Go ahead and throw. Well, first, got the drop rules up. So we're going up to 375 to 400 tons. So they've got more weight to work with. Teams do not swap sides. And as noted, we're now on Grim Plexus. So I've got that map strat up. This was interesting to watch last night. Because Grim Plexus. I'm sorry. Oh, Go no ahead. worries. Uh, I was going to say it was interesting to watch last night because we actually had a very active cap game as opposed to just go to the middle and mash mechs. Yeah, Grimplexus is definitely an interesting one in Battle for Midway. Um, if you've got the map strat up there, you can see um, the cap points for this one. They're they're pretty unique, um, even even by Battle for Midway standards. So you got all of these cap points. you got Sigma, Kappa, Gamma. They're all kind of tucked away in the corner. Each team's kind of got their home cap, um, but uh, it's a big map. So this is this is one where you can kind of get away with that that cap game. Uh, you can take that strategy. I mean, we've seen it in world championships as well. Um, just the sheer size of the map. Uh, it's, it, it makes cap straps pretty viable, but from my experience and, uh, you know what you kind of saw last night, the main body, the, t that fight is always typically somewhere centered around, uh, Kappa. Um, the whole middle of the map is kind of an open field where you can maybe try and catch a light or somebody capping, maybe get a, a small wolf pack out there. Uh, but it always seems like the the battles kind of get centered, funneled into that that cap area. So that's that's kind of what I'm expecting to see happen here. Based on what I just saw, I'm half expected to see Markstar just make a flying rush towards Cameron's side and see if they can force the brawl before they can get set up on Kappa. But I don't know if they, with the tonnage, I don't know if they can go fast enough to pull it off. Well, and they, they used up some of those those heavy, heavier fast mechs. Those linebackers have already been used up early on. This is probably a great map for something like that if you want to try and speed brawl them. Um, but I'll be interested to see. I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of mid range in in these decks as well. Um, so some laser vomit, you know, probably some dock and some of those mad cats that that uh, that are pretty popular right now. Uh, last night we saw some some ranged decks from from two two eight death from above. Um, certainly can do on this map, but uh, again with this unique kind of three cap point here, uh, that battle doesn't typically take place in the the big open area where you can really play the range game to your advantage. So um, it's it's pretty viable to bring that that brawl deck or that mid range deck, uh, especially against a range deck on here. You have a lot of avenues that that you can kind of take. Uh, Ace's Wild kind of kind of forced that range deck to them with some cap control last uh, last night. So uh, it's interesting. Cap, caps are a big deal with this one. You got the the limited time. Match time is 12 minutes only. Um, again, it's not always going to run up to that 750 cap points, um, but but it's going to going to play a difference. Uh, you can't just completely ignore the caps on this. Uh, the other team can get that cap control and and kind of kite you around the map. You know, some some teams will bring uh, you know a raven and just just run around. It was actually nice to see a raven last night. Again, another mech that I'm not used to seeing that much in comp play anymore. It was nice to see it dusted off. I saw that last night. I think we saw it uh, in EMP's drops as well. I think South was running around in that that raven on this particular map. So, all right, looks like both sides have locked in. So we're going to be going here shortly 
And then just to get people a little bit more excited while we wait for the dropships to roll in, I've been given a... Make sure I've got it right. A 1000 MC gift code to give away during the stream. I know I'm excited. Yeah, except technically, we're not supposed to win it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just excited to give some stuff away. I win plenty of stuff off of RJ, so... Uh... Yeah, I don't know where RJ comes up with the codes, but he's always got something available. It's worthwhile to be present, especially at the start of his stream, when most people haven't tuned in yet, because he's usually got something for the early viewers. Yeah, RJ is my hero, so... So, once this drop is done, coming in. this will be a little different than the normal MRBC giveaways. I'm going to make people actually have to do something in chat to get into the giveaway, rather than just talk. But we'll deal with that then. So, drop three. Merkstar has brought three Mad Cat 2Cs, Wolfhound, Piranha, Is there and I'm three sorry, marauders? three Marauders, and a Mad Cat 2C. All right, and then uh, Cameron's Highlanders. We got, uh, ooh, they're, get, they're getting rough here. They got an Annihilator 2A. Um, they brought a Piranha as well. Uh, an Ebon Jag, a Warhammer 6R. Uh, they brought a Marauder 2CA themselves, and uh, they also got a Dragon, so that's kind of interesting. I wonder what they're going to do with that. Um, as I kind of expected, though, you see that uh, they're kind of go ahead and moving. Fight's probably going to be somewhere around Kappa here. Yep. I believe Xavier did get a peek at Cameron's movements, so he's Command aware that they're setting up in this area. I don't know if Cameron's Highlanders spotted him as he was Mercer moving in. Mercer does have a light that's kind of moving out on its own. Looks like he's going to go and try and... Uh run a back cap on them, get that three cap control, really force uh, force Cameron's Highlanders to make a move here. He's turned around. I think he's just playing eyes at the moment. Got some strike action going on. Doesn't look like that landed on, near anyone. It's pretty scary, though. So both sides are aware that this is where the fight's going to be. And we saw something kind of similar for Mesa's Wild. You know, get that Kappa point, force the other team into these choke points all around Kappa. Really help you. Easy way to focus that fire, make them kind of come in single file. Yep. Looks like that light's now going for that back cap over on Sigma now. Really going to force the issue here, but it, you know, it looks like they're going to push in. And this initial push is where Merkstar should be able to peel off some damage while they're going yep. through the choke. Merkstar has got a line ready to go. They're all tight up here. Yep. Got a lot of guns to bear, forcing them single file. They're really focusing on the, the mech that's in back there, taking some peaks, that dragon. Yep, and there's the first strike, forcing them to open up and arty strike rather than air strike. Good call. So far, the trading's about even. Yeah, they're breaking down their focus fire a little bit, Merkstar is. So uh, they really should be trying to focus on the same target and bring one guy down quickly and move on to the next. Effective strike from Merkstar. Kappa, Looks like Lixry needs to fade back, share armor. He should be at the front of this push at this point, down to 50%. Lost an arm, lost his other arm. 39%. Some hurts, hurt mechs on Merkstar's side, though. Cameron's Highlanders are still pretty healthy, uh, all things considered. Yep, and... Except for maybe that Marauder and the Dragon. Piranha's looking to pounce on some open components. Scores one. Merkstar's uh, Piranha there took out the Dragon from behind. There we go, now the Piranha's getting in there turning some backs. Yep, Wolfhound for a second until back. So that Annihilator deleted them. Mm -hmm. 
Three on three, but damage is on like, Cameron's side. And it's tilting towards their favor. But they got... Uh, Mercer should really try to focus down that Piranha, because uh, otherwise they got that, that slow Annihilator, that Warhammer. Yeah, and he's about uh, to get some still gonna, Cameron's still going to... might have to catch up here on the caps, too, so... How long can they hold out, right, and play the cap game? Piranha going after the Wolfhound. Peeling out Cameron while the Cameron's Highlander should... Should maybe just peel that uh, that piranha away so that it doesn't get doesn't get gimped out here. It's probably gonna be okay though. Well, is that is he leg now? Don't believe so. The well, piranha. He looks like he's nope. legged. Oh, piranha. Yeah. I was looking at the wolfhound. Wolfhound has not been yeah. legged yet. So we got a legged piranha, we got an annihilator. In fact, he might even be legged, or he's just moving slow. Uh, a warhammer. It's going to be tough for Cameron's Highlanders to catch this wolfhound and to catch up on cap points. So I think this is going to be similar to the drop that we saw last night uh, that you, you casted, where that last mech just kind of has to stay alive and, uh, and probably is going to be able to pull it off on caps, I think. Yeah, six minutes, he's got a healthy ticket lead. It's Two a rough mistake, you know. Uh, been in that light mech in these situations, and you get thirsty, you want the kill, but uh, he probably should have backed off being the last fast mech on the field for him uh, so that they didn't have to worry about the situation where he could uh, still run the caps and keep them, uh, keep them uh, with the cap points. Yeah, at this point, the Warhammer, this is odd to say, is the fastest mech on the field for Cameron's Highlanders. With five minutes on the clock and a 300-point ticket deficit, I don't think he's fast enough. He's breaking off to Gamma. The Annihilator appears to be lumbering his way to Sigma. And the Piranha is going to just sit on Kappa. I, don't think I mean, it's it's good that they have three mechs. They're going to have to... If, I just I don't see them being able to catch up. They have to travel all the way across the map. There's five minutes left. And they're they're way behind on caps. I think we'll just have to, to kind of wait this one out. And I think it's... Uh, although Merkstar might have lost the engagement, I think they're going to they're win the battle here. I think you're right. Arkstar's Wolfhound is taking the back path to Can to Gamma. Four minutes on the clock. Almost 500 tickets for Merkstar. Now, I mean, even if Cameron Highlander could get that Wolfhound, it does open up the other cap points, but I still don't think that these mechs would be fast enough to get there and, and bring them back within uh, a reasonable cap range. So, do you bank on that and have the Annihilator turn for Theta now? If that's a possibility? I mean, you could maybe do that, but you got you got a legged Piranha sitting on Kappa already, which, and no reason for the Wolfhound to go there. So you have to hope that uh, then the Warhammer would guess right. Hope, yeah. I guess you could try to try to jump it, though. Uh, Wolfhound's in some pretty rough shape. He's open in the back. He's got internal damage, CT. The Warhammer's gonna come around the corner here. He's pretty short range build though in the Warhammer. He's uh, two snub nose and an AC-20. So as long as uh, the Wolfhound can get range on him, he's gonna be okay. What amuses me to see is the laser AMS on the Warhammer. Yeah, that... that... That is kind of interesting. I remember a while back going through and stripping AMS off everything I had because what was the point? I don't know. In today's, in today's meta, gamma. as yep. you said, we've seen LRMs in Battle for Midway. So we've obviously seen them in the World Championships for reasons. Yeah. 
just interesting the way the game changes. So Wolfhound is skipping going to Sigma. Cameron's about I mean, to have a three cap. Yeah, I just I don't think there's enough there. Uh, they got to catch up in two and a half minutes. Is a three cap enough to to even out the point spread? Merkster is going to be sitting on 600 cap points. Cameron's Highlanders would have to make up 350 more or less in two minutes. Yeah, I don't think they're going to pull it off. Uh, Grimplex is always an interesting one. So Enemy take a count is Sigma. stopped for Merkstar, but... Yeah, My map is pretty bad. I don't think that they can come back, though. No, I don't see how at this point. If they lucked out and got the Wolfhound, who is currently just kind of wandering, yeah, he, just, he might he go just into this He just needs to stay alive. He doesn't need to engage at all. But uh, none of their mechs are fast enough to make it to take advantage of any of those extra cap points at this point. I think now he's just going to be greedy and see if he can get one more kill. Yeah, I think I think this would have been an easy win for Cameron's Highlander if the uh, the Prana just would have broke away from that engagement instead of sticking around and trying to fight it out. But that's, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. There it goes. Xavier getting his uh, getting his cookie there. Yep. With a minute left. Flipping the cap point really doesn't do anything, but well, they've got the game. Better, I suppose. Yeah, it's a morale booster. That's right. Command confirming that we have possession of Kappa. Oh, yep, and it's just been pointed out to me that my overlay messed up. The team names are flipped. This will us huge Sorry about that, folks. I will have to see why that glitched. Four, then. Pull up the team stats. Wow, uh, looking at Cameron Highlanders there. Um, I said that Dragon was an interesting pick. He put out 817 damage. Uh, I figured the big boy on the field probably would have been that Annihilator, but uh, uh, he certainly laid down some hurt, uh, Sir Epic Pawner. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tally the kills here. Flip back, and once we get into the lobby, I'm going to ask them to hold for just a moment before they launch and see if we can get a giveaway queued up. Give away some stuff? That's the theory. Heck yeah.
right. So, if I'm doing this correctly, there is an announcement in chat. Hashtag BFM gets you into the raffle. At the end of the last drop, I will close the raffle and determine who gets the 1,000 MC. Because we're on a five-minute delay, pay attention to chat because you'll see who wins there before you hear it on stream. What are we giving away? 1,000 MC. So in alternate currency, that's three mech bays unless they go on sale, plus a little left over. Glad you got that stuff figured out. And don't know why the overlay glitched, but... Well, because they, they switched sides, right? So uh... Yeah, and I'm, I've got my tool set to, to flip that, but apparently it didn't for that one. It didn't catch the update. But It might have automatically did that because they might not have switched after that first round. That makes sense? Um, I think it was a Google Sheets glitch, actually, the way I'm doing it. I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing and that I don't. <laughs> I'm going to say it was a gaffe on my side. They were on the correct spots on their side. Uh, but like I was kind of expecting, uh, that drop, um, Cap's big part of it. Uh, that's kind of Grim Plexus and Battle for Midway. Battle happened around the, that, that Kappa capture point. Uh, we're going to see some completely different decks. Again, we know that uh, it was a Cameron's Highlanders. They brought three Marauders, so their deck's going to look quite a bit different this time around. Like both teams are locked. Okay. And yeah, I think you're right. The teams did flip on me. So my overlay was correct. They flipped when they didn't need to. All right. No worries. I can work with this. Overlay adjusted. This time should line up. And if you're watching chat, I think you have some fans. Oh, yeah? They're everywhere, Curlon. Everywhere. But, uh, here we go. Drop four. Let's do this. You get it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Markstar, Madcat 2B, 2C, Onion 2C, Wolfhound, Wolfhound, Onion 2C, Madcat 2C. I like that. It's that brawling stuff uh, with those onions, I think. Or I guess it could be LRMs these days, too. Uh, Cameron Highlanders, uh, we got uh, an Annihilator 2A. We got a Dragon 5N again. Uh, another Evan Jag, Marauder 2CA, Warhammer 6R, and Piranha. I think this is pretty much... This is a similar deck that they brought last time. It was Merkstar that brought the uh, the three Marauder 2C. So I think I think Cameron's Highlanders are bringing the same thing here. Okay. Just tighten it up. Maybe don't get that that Piranha killed uh, in the engagement uh, in case they need to cap. I think they uh, they'll be okay. So Cameron has got one light. One unit has grabbed Gamma. Bulk of their forces are going to Kappa. Interestingly, Merkstar is not sending everything to Kappa initially. They got a couple lights there, it looks like. Yeah, Wolfhound's working as a wolf pack. Grab Kappa, and they're bailing. They do not want the fight at Kappa this time. 
And the wolfhounds successfully got out of there before Cameron's units arrived. Now let's see what they're bringing. Dual Ultra AC-5s, sure. Ultra AC-10s on Drew the Blue. The does same that, with does... a couple medium lasers for Infamati. That's in the Mad Cats. I had to know those Onion 2Cs are Brawl, uh, LB-20s, SRMs. Uh, Cameron's Highlanders, uh, they're kind of all in here on Kappa. Uh, they're kind of giving up the, the rest of the map here. Merkstar is not going to play their game there at Kappa. Looks like they just wanted the early cap. Now they're going to be able to kind of control the map from here. They're getting the back caps, Sigma and Gamma. Yeah, they're going to force Cameron's to make a decision. Yep, we got them up on uh, that Fox 6, that Hamburger Hill uh, position, which as long as they can hold those two other caps is going to be a strong position for them. Cameron's Highlanders are all going to be every single one of their mechs on Kappa, and it's going to be hard for them to try and get out of there with uh, with them up high on that, that, that position there. So some light initial trading. One strike in against Cameron's Highlanders that really didn't do much. And they're moving out of Kappa. They have resource they're taking out. probably the best route that they can. It puts some distance on them from the, the guys up on the hill. I don't think that they're going to get through here unnoticed. Uh, but we talked about, you know, the, the mechs and the loadouts there. Uh, Mercer's got quite a few brawl mechs and short-range mechs. So I'd imagine the more distance they can put, uh, the better the better off they're going to be able to get out of there and make a... Make a concerted push with some cover here. Yeah, so interestingly, Mercs are... Now they're peeking. Didn't look like they were actually watching. But... Now we've got some initial trading. Some early scratch damage. And again, no one... Oh, there's an incoming strike. Nails Kamichiwa. We do have one of Cameron's Highlanders, uh, Light Mechs, uh, breaking off here. Their only light mech. Doesn't seem interested in playing the cap game yet either. But he's got to be careful because he's going to be out here alone and he could get into a... Certainly don't want him to, to get ganked out here. Informati gets singled out and nailed as Merkstar begins to push down the hill into Cameron's Highlanders. Yeah, Kamichiwa is down to 53. There. And taken out. That push did not go well. Drew the Blue is now backing out as James Bond gets singled out. Yeah, he's stuck in a bad spot now where all the enemy team can fire at him and he has nowhere to go. Now Drew the Blue's trying to trade. I don't know if that's really a good spot to try and do that from, but... Yeah. With the rotation, Cameron's is backing off, so for the moment, he's going to live. Well, Mercer does have their, their lights kind of coming in behind here. Looks like they were trying to get the piranha that broke off, but uh, he ran right back to his buddies, and now they're, in the, they're the ones in the bad situation here. Rodius goes down quickly. Rana did its job. Drew's still up. He's he's fighting the best he can. He's got that Annihilator coming up on him, though. Go watch that fight. Down to 48. Lost Getting one of his arms. Sides. Yeah. Matter of time for Drew the Blue. Xavier, once again, really healthy in that Wolfhound. 93%, but uh, he's he's the, uh, the one guy left. So, Merc Star down to that one unit. They have the cap and ticket lead, but it's not as big as last time. I mean, Cameron's Highlanders got a lot of mechs out there on the, the field still this time. They got their Piranha, their fast mech. Uh, I think they'll be in a much better place to 
to handle this situation than last time around. Yeah, the big thing is this time the clock and ticket count is giving them a fighting chance. Yeah, not as far behind on the, the cap points. Is following Xavier at the moment, seeing what he's thinking. Working the back path. Meanwhile, Cameron's is about to have a unit on Gamma to flip that cap back. Yeah, smartly spreading out, putting a mech on each cap. Sigma's been flipped. Well, decapped, anyways. So Xavier knows someone's there, and he's still charging in. Not a bad point for him to try and take, though. That's the piranha there. A little hesitant. Piranha getting out of there, which I think is a good move. Yep, he's playing a little bit smarter this time. Doesn't want to get, get their speed mech killed, right? He's going to live to fight another day, maybe. They're close enough in caps, though. They really only need to hold two of these points, which they're going to be able to do. They have weight on heavyweight, two mechs each to Kappa and, and Gamma. We have Gamma. That Piranha can just kind of even just keep eyes on or just wait for the Wolfhound to leave Sigma and then hop back on it. Xavier realizing the clock's not on his side, did not do a full cap. Although, given the cap issues we've had recently, I probably would have liked to have seen a little bit more cap on there, just to guarantee that points are counting. Solid point. It's such a slim cap that uh, really they could have just threw that piranha right back on it and got the, uh, the three cap right back. Uh, it looks like they do have a couple units going to flip it. Thinking they're keeping the Piranha more towards the middle just to be able to respond quicker. Yeah, they really only need the one Annihilator there to cover Kappa. Although that Wolfhound is completely fresh. I think the, uh, the Annihilator is pretty much just... Uh, he's legged, which is an interesting, interesting choice. Uh, but otherwise, he's sitting pretty good armor-wise. I don't think he's going to lose a battle to the uh, to the Wolfhound. No, his back armor hasn't been touched. Those Ultras will, if they get on target, will rip that Wolfhound up fairly quick. On an already pretty slow mech, I think you're better off uh, trying to at least take a, a side tour. So it looks like he's got one open up now. Yeah, Xavier doing a decent poke. Yeah, there it goes. Yep. Lost half the mech. Uh, I'll split a ways away. Deraku shielding the one leg. Cameron's now has the three cap and the ticket lead. So a lot, and Xavier does get the Annihilator, but. That piranha is going to be coming in. How did Xavier Decent. fare in that? Decent. Only one arm open. Everywhere else still has some armor left. And here comes the piranha. Again, though, the one point's not going to do it for them. We need at least two of them. They still got pretty fresh mechs out there as well. I think this fight will be pretty much just for the sport of it. The Warhammer's coming into support now. Yeah. Xavier does get the Piranha. Xavier's uh, doing some work in that, that wolf on. Getting some delicious cookies. Yeah, they are nasty mech in the 6 medium laser build. A little hot. But they've got This Warhammer's not in great shape either. You can probably take him down too in the, the next 50 seconds. He's weak CT, he's got internal damage from behind. 
unfortunately, he's gonna lose the clock game. Okay, he's opened up. He's probably gonna take this Warhammer with him, too. There he goes. Nicely done. Cameron's other two units are content to stay on their caps. They've got the game. Under enemy control. At this point, not enough time to flip it. But good effort on Xavier's part. Yep. Yeah, Battle for Midway Grimplexus, one of my favorites. So, both the Annihilator and Dragon doing some serious work for Cameron's Highlanders. Yep, that Dragon seems to be a mech he's very comfortable in. Um, over on Merkstar's side, though, drew the blue and that, that Mad Cat 2 B that was up on top of Hamburger Hill there. Uh, didn't go so well for his, uh, his Onion friends, but uh, he was able to, to lay down some hurt from up there. 710 damage, one kill. Xavier Curse uh, getting the hat trick, getting three kills himself. Tough to flip it, though, when you're 1v5. I believe that puts us at 2-2, uh, doesn't it? Correct. 2-2, two, two, and actually, we're even on kills also, if I've done my math right. 18 kills each. Excellent. This has been a good one. Yeah. This is a fun one for my, my first uh, dip in toes into this kind of thing. Well, so far, your experience is greatly ex appreciated, and chat seems to appreciate it as well. Awesome. So I'm happy a good to have time. you here. So, last drop... We've got a choice, uh, Polar Highlands, Frozen City, or Alpine Peaks. Last night... Good old, was... good old map ban. Last night we what? We saw Alpine? Yeah, after a bunch of Polar drops in week one, or uh, not week one, but uh, earlier matches, earlier they went the for week, Alpine, yeah. changed things up a little bit. And it looks like we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be headed to Alpine. Well, let me just pull that up then. I don't even know what to say about Alpine. It's an interesting one. Uh, in fact, later in the the tournament, I think we'll see this as. Uh, as one of the, the double drops. I think it's a drop three and four with some weight. Uh, later on, where they'll have to play both sides. So I'm just trying to remember what I remember seeing from, uh, from last year. Uh, it's kind of interesting, right? Um, interesting cap spread here. Uh, Cause you got, you got gamma way off to its side over there. Um, a lot of teams will try to slug it out. They'll try to play the, uh, the range game. Typically don't see much brawl here, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, what Merkstar does here. Um, as my experience, they're fast brawl kind of team. I think we kind of seen a lot of that uh, tonight. Um, interested to see if they're gonna gonna sit back and try and play some range, but uh, a lot of that fighting typically is kind of down in this range here. Now, with that being said, uh, Carolina, it'll probably happen to me. That's probably not at all what we'll see. We'll probably see some shenanigans up on top of the hill or something. Something dumb like a fight at Gamma. I don't know. I'd be surprised if you see a fight at Gamma. But as noted, I have a zero success rate at calling this. What's uh, interesting is you always see almost at least one team bothered to go ahead and get Gamma. Um, maybe not right away at the beginning, but one, one team usually does typically at least at some point cut a mech off to Gamma. And it's interesting to see if, if that pays out for them in the end, right? 
Um, the main engagement, though, is definitely going to be in this long valley area here. There is some area to move up under cover along this side here. Uh, but at the same time, Team 1 can kind of get a strong position up here on this ridge as well. Kind of shooting down. I'm just drawing everywhere now on the map. Uh, uh, yeah, and... I was kind of packing up from, from work where I was at last night. What, uh, what did we see last night? This is where I'm horrible, and I should have actually rewatched last night's video. I honestly don't remember. I've been playing so many matches since that. Um, I hear you. That's that's fine though. Like I said, we're we're probably going to see some action right in here. And again, so, I'm really interested to see what uh, what Merc Star is bringing because I think I'm. I'm surprised we're on this map. It seems like it's uh, it's out of their comfort. But uh, the map that I figured that a, a team like them would choose out of these three maps, without that range aspect to it, Frozen, uh, that's the one that they uh, they chose to ban. So they, maybe they got a good plan here. I well, don't see what happens. So yeah, most good cameras. most good teams are are practicing and doing scrims throughout the week and. Uh, from my experience, they typically practice a couple of these um, so that they're they're good to go in any situation. They probably got a really good game plan for uh, for Alpine. I want to see it. Yeah. So Cameron's Highlanders are going to be Team Two. It'll be interesting to see is if they they do push straight into Kappa down that valley or take the protected path to the left, or if they try and set up on take the time to get up on the I-9, H-9 hill area. That is the one alternate path I've seen. Oh, yeah. But the downside is, as I noted, it takes time to get up there. And uh, there, most people would say that this is uh, one one side does have the advantage. I'm not exactly sure which, which one that is. I'm never really the tactician here. Um, I know if I'm playing on this map... In this situation, I'd want to be that that team one side though. It gives you the most flexibility. You have the most routes. You can play up high. Uh, you can control this area down over in here. Uh, and if they do play this, you're in a good spot to be able to, to deal with this. If for some reason they do end up coming up here on, uh, you know, Try Hard Mountain. So, agreed. Um, I will freely admit my distance trading game is not what it should be. So I, if I can, I prefer to close the range, and it's much easier to do so from Team One side. You just got You got a lot of options over there. If I'm Team Two in this situation, uh, I'm definitely bringing a, a range deck, and I'm going to try and hurt them while I can from kind of probably down in this area the best I can, and maybe have one mech uh, kind of play that high area, maybe break off to. Uh, to gamma loop back around and uh, get eyes or, or maybe bring one of those, those Ravens that everybody's so fond of now sit up in a high position and uh, just harass team one and get them to start turning some backs, making some, some movement, uh, get some eyes off your main body so you can maybe push up or, or get some, some good shots on them. So good focus fire. Or we may see that same Raven packing an arc. They may turn this into an LRM match. That's that's very that's true too. We can't rule that out anymore. Nope. The moment Bowser brings an LRM mech, everything's on the table. If he puts on a fanny pack and wears some Velcro shoes, you better bet everybody else is gonna start doing it too. I think fanny packs are coming back, by the way. That's a Judas prediction for you. If I go dig through my attic, I might still be able to find my original Nintendo Game Boy fanny pack. There you go. You should wear that for next stream. Then you have all your things that you need right there and readily accessible. Oh, I can just imagine what chat would do if I show up with that. 
if I'm going to go all in, I got to have the the Game Boy fanny pack. I got to have my Virtual Boy set up on the table. Never did own. You got a Virtual Boy? Oh yeah. Nah, I never owned one, but I did want one. Despite oh, man, I the had horrible one. reviews. I had one. They are they are pretty terrible, and it's it's terrible to to spend 15 minutes trying to play it, but it's kind of funny. They had some some robot games for it, I think, too. That's right, too. Not, not good ones, but they had them. I think it was robot boxing. Now I'm going to have to go look. <laughs> Looks like we're, we're close to getting ready to go here, though. I think we just got to do some lance juggling, and uh, we'll be ready to, to hop in there. I'll be right back. Both sides have locked. Do we still get that giveaway going? That is going. I'm going to close that at the end of the match. They still got time. Hashtag BFM. And your memory was correct. Telerobboxer was the mech on mech boxing game for the virtual board. Nailed it. Everybody in chat learned something today. RJ's getting a little spicy in chat, rooting for CH, because if they win, that keeps DFA in first place. Can't hold that against anybody, I suppose? No. All right, Alpine Pete. Drop five. Let's Drop see five. what happens. Let's Judas. And there we go. Here's the startup music. So, Merkstar has Command coming in. three Hellbringers. DLR is Battlemasters, I believe. That looks like it's uh, a range deck from Merkstar. I bet you some, some ER large lasers over there. On Cameron's Highlander side, uh, looks like they're finally bringing out the Mad Cat Bees. Uh, oh, interesting. They got three Mad Cat Bees and they got three Bushwhackers. So they get, they're they going uh, kind of a, a mid-range, probably brawly kind of setup. It's going to be a long, hard push for them, uh, an uphill battle, if you will. But uh, if they can close range on those uh, those Battlemasters, those Hellbringers, uh, they're probably going to be able to put some hurt down. Of course, this is with those new energy changes, though. So those Hellbringers are probably uh, a little bit... Shooting a little bit faster, cooling off a little bit quicker than they were uh, before Tuesday. So looking at the Hellbringers, 4 ER large, 4 ER large. Battlemaster with 6 ER large. 6 ER large. And a 4 ER large Hellbringer, so yeah, they are looking for the range game. I'm going to guess that those six uh, ER large uh, Battlemasters are running XLs, though. So uh, maybe these guys can close that distance, maybe pop a side torso or two, and take one of them down pretty quick. 
Uh, as I mentioned, some a team normally usually sends at least a mech to Gamma, but I don't think we're going to see that this time, especially with these drop decks. Yeah, neither side opted for a light. Which, last night, lights were part of the ruckus getting the other sides turned around. So, maybe a good call, may not be. Wow, look at this position that... Uh... That uh, uh, Merc Star is taking up here. I told you that they probably they chose this map. They probably have a pretty good plan of what they want to do. It seems like the they're going to try to be executing that right now. They got a good high position. They got all these long range lasers. This, like I said, it's going to be a long hard push here for Cameron's Highlanders. Looking at their buildouts, Ultra AC fives, Ultra AC tens, SRMs. They're prepared to get in their face. Rootstar does have some guys that are playing up a little bit. Uh, it looks like they've spotted the main body here, though. So they were moving up, and now they're uh, kind of holding off. If they're smart, they're going to want to pull that range back, force uh, Cameron's Highlanders out into the open into a bad spot here. And Getting some bad peaks here uh, from Litzkrieg. He's only one peeking out when uh, Merkster is all of their mechs just focused down on him, and he's he's already losing a lot of uh, health. Down to 65% already. So Epic Poner and the Bushwhackers also made a couple bad moves, and takes a little bit more damage there as well. Merkster's taking some hurt, though. We got Xavier down to 62%. Let's Creek goes down. Looking at this from Merkstar's side. Oh. Cameras Highlanders can't keep poking this. They're they're poking one at a time. They're letting all of Merkstar's mechs just poke, shoot once at one guy, put in a lot of hurt. They're in a bad spot now. They got a couple mechs down below 50%. They're down a mech. Uh, it's either time to push this corner or come up with a new plan quick. Cameron's did get one good strike in there after being on the receiving end of three or four. Kind of awkwardly backing up now, but uh, they're going to run out of a place to go as uh, Merkstar keeps swinging wide here. Yep, Torwin Dog drops next. Merkstar being smart. They're, they're taking angles where everybody can shoot. They're good and spread out. They Bushwhacker's can't just get is going to pay down. for being on top of that hill. Yep, he's, he's uh, getting singled out. They're actually... Merkstar is focusing on the Mad Cat first, though. Xavier is down to 54%. Uh, they also, yep, one of the Hellbringers as well, James Bond, uh, down to 51%. So they're they're getting some hurt there, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. They've got three mechs, one of them barely standing. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the strike the experience be might have... Experience kind of paid off here, though. Uh, Merkstar, like I said, they definitely had a plan of what they wanted to come here and do. This seems like reminiscence of a deck that they would bring in faction uh, faction play. They probably feel very comfortable on this map. They executed their plan well. I think I think Cameron's Highlanders were just kind of beat in the mech lab. I have to say you're right. And <laughs> there it is. Welcome it to faction play, yep. Yeah. So at this point, even tickets. They just got to jump on another cap point to end this quickly because they've destroyed the other side. They can touch any cap points they want to do it. We've captured resource point Sigma. Uh, I think I think Cameron's Highlanders might have been okay if they they didn't just kind of peek one by one around that corner. If you commit to it, if you're bringing that that mid range, that more brawly kind of deck. You just kind of got to uh, big balls push it around that corner and just go at them. Keep running at those range mechs until they start getting hot. Uh, and you can really get get in that optimal range for your weapons. Yeah, and that's always the challenge is the push is called. You're the first one around the corner. You take that initial volley hard and you put on the brakes. And you yeah. have to ignore when your teammate does that and just walk around, keep going. Otherwise, you get picked off. 
It gets scary around that corner. Yep, just gotta, gotta push keep, through. Gotta keep going, otherwise now you're just losing a mech for no reason. So, looking at the damage, it basically tells exactly what happened. Merksar has got mechs with 600, 600, 550, 400. Whereas you look on Cameron's side, their high hitter was the Bushwhacker with 400. They poked at the wrong time. One mech versus six is never a winning combo. With, with that kind of composition, you, you can't play the, the poking game. Um, again, you gotta, you gotta call the push. You gotta all go. Um, you gotta close that distance as fast as you can. Um, uh, I, that, that deck they were against was entirely ER large lasers. You gotta close the distance. You gotta get close and you gotta get them hot. So on that note, I've got 13 people entered into the raffle. I'm going to close it and let's see. KR Candyman. You are the winner of the 1000 MC. Whisper me in Twitch. I will get you a code. And he sees that in chat. So awesome. Hopefully he'll stick around for instructions. So in the meantime... Captain Judas, thank you for co-casting. Again, having experience here versus me babbling is awesome. Hey, man, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for letting me do it. Thanks uh, for letting me dip my toes into, into this side of it a little bit and see what the, the action's like from the, the bleachers. Not a problem. And this point, anytime you want to jump in, have at. Yeah, just ping me when, uh, when games are happening and you're going to cast them, and I'll let you know if I'm available. Sounds like a plan. So, gonna... I had fun tonight. I hope everybody that watched the match had fun tonight. It was a good one, a close one, a 3-2 decision. A lot of interesting things. Um, I think all of the div divisions in, uh, in competitive play are interesting. Um, from the top to the even the the lower divs, you see a you see a lot of cool stuff happening. So I always try to tune into all of them. Yeah, and it's nice to see new squads stepping up. Absolutely. So, on that note, I'm gonna close things out. So again, Kr Candyman, whisper me so I can fling you a code. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Captain. Good night, everyone. Helping. Thank you, sir.